still a lot of room to grow. I was disappointed at the end of the game that we didn't finish things the right way. Uh, we drove the ball down. We should have scored. We had to kick a field goal. They took the ball down. They scored. Some things we got to get better at finishing the game, playing the fourth quarter um, that we got to improve on. We're going to emphasize that today, tomorrow, moving forward. That will be a huge emphasis for us. I um, also talked about conference play. And I explained to, to everybody in the room that, you know, the next five games in the next six weeks are all conference opponents and that our goals and aspirations are to be in the playoffs. And the only way you can guarantee yourself that opportunity is to win the conference. Everything else is who knows what. And, and so, um, so they understand the importance, obviously, of any game, but especially of conference games, because uh, to get to where we want to go, that's the way to do it. And uh, so hopefully those are some things we talked about. We can emphasize this week as we continue to prepare and uh, clean up some things uh, that, that we didn't do as well and, uh, and build on those things that we were, that were positive in the game and see if we could, can really make a, uh, another step forward as far as getting better as a football program. I'll open the floor for questions. When you go back and review the other night and watch the tape, you know, you said you were proud of the guys and you said that there were some steps that were made forward. Can you look at or uh, talk about some specifics where you really thought, okay, we, we improved that night? Yeah, offensively, no turnovers, no penalties. And we were fortunate on the first drive, if you'll remember. We had the ball on the ground twice. All right, so it, it, we were lucky. It bounced our way. But after that, we were pretty consistent. Our third down, we convert. You know, we converted some critical third downs, um, and, and so I think that was, uh, you know, offensively was a huge positive. I think keeping them out of the end zone on defense. I think that first drive though was long, and we were gassed. Them only getting a field goal was huge because they've struggled in the red zone, and uh, that was demoralizing for them to, to to have that long drive and not be able to get seven points, and we were able to answer. And all of a sudden, they're back in their same situation they've been in a lot of their games um, where they're kicking field goals instead of scoring touchdowns, and that's been a problem. Um, and then uh, I think – so I think there were some positives on, on those two sides. And the biggest – to me, the biggest momentum play of the game was the uh, kickoff return in the second half. There was no two ways about that. And if we could have converted points going into the halftime and then got that and scored, it would have – it would have been done then. We didn't do as good a job as we normally have in the past. And you guys have been around know usually we're pretty efficient. You know, 48 seconds or whatever in three timeouts, that's an eternity. I mean, we should be able to go get points and we just we just couldn't get it done. But we did come out and have a good kickoff return. We were able to score and, uh, you know, and move forward from there. So I think there's a, there's a lot of things you can look at, um, you know, that were positive and, uh, and, and the things we got to get better at. Can you talk a little about the play of the back end of your defense? You probably have as many question marks there coming into this season as, as anywhere, but you replaced some pretty key guys, even Izzy in the middle and, and some of these players playing in the back end. This was their best game by far, I think, thus far. Well, we kept them in front of us. Um, you know, and, I, and we've, we've had a lot of competition on the back end. We've had several different guys playing. Uh, at corner, there's been, uh, you know, really three guys uh, you know, vying for playing time. Um, I thought Dorian Walker's much improved Saturday. Uh, I like his attention to detail has improved. I thought he's made some progress. Um, you know, so, and we were playing in a dime package most of the time where Cole Loden was in there as an adjuster and, and Demetrius Petway, and, and then you had Sincere and Jace back at safety. So um, those guys have made progress. Uh, it is a young group. And uh, in every rep, as I've told you guys before, is so uh, critical for their, uh, you know, their improvement on what they're doing. And I think they'll continue to get better. But I thought really we did a nice job of just not letting anything behind us, no big plays, um, making them earn everything, you know, and making them have to go down the field and, and earn it. And I thought we did a good job of that. And we got, we probably got more pressure on the queue than anybody has in a while, truthfully. You know, I think we had registered a couple of sacks, um, but <laughs> against that guy, that's pretty big. I mean, he's hard to, you know, he's hard to, he's hard to get on the ground. He can run. He, and, and so, uh, so we did a better job of that as well. You're looking at uh, Presbyterian, uh, giving up about 190 yards a game rushing, but 
it's not turning into points. What uh, what are you seeing from their defense that uh, stands out that's keeping opponents out of the end zone? <coughs> Coach Spangler's teams are always going to be well coached, especially on defense. He's a defensive guy, and they're going to be sound. They're going to do everything they can to keep you in front get you on the ground and make you earn everything. And always has been, always will be. We've known Coach Spangler for a long time. Um, so they're going to be well coached, they're going to be tough, and they're going to play extremely hard. And, uh, and that's, a, that's a Coach Spangler football team. So we know they're going to be ready to play. They'll be excited about the opportunity. And, uh, and, and again, I go back to it's, uh, it's as much about us and how we go about our business as it, as it is anything. We, you know, we, we haven't reached our potential as a football team yet. We, we're nowhere close to it. So uh, we got to continue to gain on that. What's Presbyterian do well offensively or present a challenge for you guys? Well, they're a little bit of, uh, you know, they're like a lot of people. They spread it out and do the RPO and different stuff, um, you know, it, which is a, a common theme among most people we play today. That's what most people do. So, um, you know, they, they're good. Uh, they mix it up. You know, they try to get on the perimeter. Uh, their back's a good player, um, so it's uh, we just got to go do the you know play our best game and and see where it takes us. Coach, we lost obviously Big Z in the beginning of the season. What are you seeing out of Travis and Desmond at the nose? Yeah, Travis. Uh, Travis is probably one of the more athletic kids on our football team. Uh, you know, for a defensive lineman, that's a big statement. Um, he's he's growing every week. I think you're going to see him more and more as we go. Um, sometimes those guys aren't the ones flashing, but he's very talented. He's gotten a little better every week um, with his assignments and just uh, doing the things he needs to to be successful. So I'm excited about that. Um, he's a red shirt freshman, so he's been around a little bit. Um, you know, Desmond Scott, true freshman, much heavier. You know, uh, you know Travis is 250, 260. Um, you know, Desmond's a 300 pound kid. Um, and he's learning every week, obviously being a true freshman. But um, both those guys have really done some good things. Uh, Travis just being ahead because he's been around a little bit more. Um, so those guys have really filling in, you know, where Big Z was before. Uh, really done a good job. And uh, so I'm excited about watching those guys continue to grow as players. Um, I think they're only going to get better every week. Um, they both work hard. They got great attitudes. So uh, excited about those two guys. Has Z been a guy who's kind of helped those guys while he's tooling around on the scooter? I guess he's on his second one now. Yeah, we got to put a speed limit on the scooter. <laughs> he came around in the office the other day and took a tight corner and, and about took everybody out. <laughs> um, I got on the scooter a little bit just to see what it was like. Um, luckily, nobody got that videoed. Um, but, uh, but yeah, Big Z's always, uh, you know, I think he's a positive influence, and it may not be necessarily X's and O's, but I think the other stuff's a little more important. You know, if you guys been around Big Z's story, he's pretty impactful, just where he came from to where he's at now. So he's really a good guy uh, to have around for those young guys, especially some good leadership. So he's been around. Like I said, he's motoring around on that scooter. Uh, we need to, like I said, we need to put speed limits up in the office uh, for Big Z. But yeah, he's been a great mentor for those guys. Red shirt rules kind of been front and center at some of the uh, uh, Power Five conferences past week. Uh, how are you tackling it uh, now that we're we're past the quote unquote four games? But I know that could be used throughout the year. Any decisions on uh, uh, on guys whether they're you're going to keep them down the whole year? Or? Yeah. So the four games really is four games. It could be it could be four playoff games, four regular – I mean, it doesn't matter. It's four games. So, um, the guys that w right now are probably going to play are Desmond Scott, Chance Bates, Tyler Moore, um, probably Matt Olson. Um, and that's right off the top of my head that are probably – they're they're probably not going to redshirt this year. You never know what could happen in the next three years. Um, all the other guys we are juggling – with our depth issues at different places to try to manage that. We know their best football is going to be their next four, not this one. So we're juggling that. Some guys don't play in games simply because we're hanging on as long as we can because we feel like if somebody gets hurt late in the year, we're going to need them to play. So to me, I don't want to go burn all those 
kids four games early in the year, I really rather hang on to some of them as long as I can because some areas we may need them. And, uh, and some of them practice, like on the offensive line, you got Chris Dyes, Ian Katina, you got a bunch of guys practicing every day, but they're not playing simply because we're trying to, to manage it until it has to happen. Um, I could go play them, you know, if we get ahead or whatever happens, but, and then later on somebody gets hurt and you don't, you don't have anybody to put in the game. Um, so it, it's a, it's, as I said last time, it's a little bit of a week to week deal. We got some guys that play two games, some guys that play one game. It's a little bit mixed and match. We'll hit some guys in the next few weeks if they get to play that they'll cap out, you know, and that'll be it. So we're trying to manage all of it um, the best we can. It's, uh, um, it's a week to week, week to week deal. So I, I mean, it's, it's, it's a positive rule for us. Let me say that, you know, to have the ability for those guys to have an opportunity to play um, has been has helped us tremendously. And I think for FCS football, and I don't want to speak for everybody, but depth is always an issue. So to have some extra guys is, is, is huge. Homecoming week, and you're in your fourth year now. Do you expect to have some guys in that were startup guys on the program that have moved on to address the team, be around on game day, etc.? I don't know as of right now. Haven't heard anything. Obviously, you know we love having those guys back, and that would be uh, really impactful if, if if that could work out. Hadn't heard anything. I know I know there's a lot of guys coming about every game. Um, I think they go enjoy themselves at the game. Um, but uh, but but they're you know, I think those opportunities are going to come, Brian, with those guys, and I, obviously, guys that have been here and laid the foundation for this program in different ways. Um, I think it's really impactful for them to come speak to the team at different different moments. So I'm sure that's going to come up for us. How's the mass unit? You must be talking about the offensive line. Well, I mean the whole team in general. Yeah. Well, the I think um, you know we got the injury report today and. Uh, there was no illnesses on the bottom of it. And I'm like, holy cow. And I said, this is monumental. We still got some guys with colds and stuff were shaking, but I think that's a positive step. Um, you know, I think we'll get some guys back this week, um, but there'll be some guys out. But I think we're, we're starting to turn the corner, I'm hoping, a little bit, where we'll collectively start to get a group back that, that uh, you know, that we can go out and practice every week. You know, and 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 put you know a couple groups together. You can go practice and get better. Um, so we're a little banged up, but not near not near as bad as we've been. Um, without remembering every name and every spot, because there's been so many uh, just changes and you know each week. But um, so we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully it'll continue to get better.